Coming up next on Hands on Windows, we're going to take a sneak peek at some of the first features we're going to see in the next version of Windows 11, 24H2. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Thrott. And if you listen to or watch Windows Weekly, you know that we've been talking a lot about the next version of Windows 11 lately, uh, Windows 11 version 24H2. If not, no worries. Um, the quick rundown is that this release will be different from previous releases because it's a different year and everything has to be different. Um, there will be a staggered rollout, so there'll be two big release milestones. The first will happen in May or June of 2024, the initial release, which is going out there to support those Snapdragon X uh, ARM-based uh, Windows and ARM PCs. And then the second will happen in the second half of the year, probably in the normal October time frame. And that will have all kinds of AI features, which we've sort of got rumors for, and we're going to learn at Build in May, which is happening right after I record the show. So by the time you see this, we probably will know a lot more about 24H2. Um, but in this video, what we're going to focus on is that first release, the one that's coming out in the short term. And it does have several new features. I wouldn't describe any of them as major, but they are interesting. And some of them are actually uh, something are some things I've been looking forward to, frankly. So let's take a look. So first up is that Microsoft is switching from that static single image desktop background they've been using for a long time to something called Windows Spotlight. And you might know this from the Windows 11 and also Windows 10 lock screen. They brought it to the desktop. You can see this, this kind of icon up here. It's a little less chatty than the lock screen version in the sense that it doesn't give you a lot of information uh, all over the desktop. But you can right click this if you want to learn more about what this image is, which is pretty cool. And if you don't want it, you can get rid of it, of course. And that's in personalization in the settings app. Um, background and then you can see here it's it's set to window spotlight so i'm going to leave that here for now because we're talking about 24 h2 kind of gives it a, a different look and feel but um you can go back to the old version the old picture or whatever you were using before if that's what you prefer so that's good now the next two are actually related to the context menu uh, which is kind of interesting you may know that in windows 11 they simplified it made it prettier but they also got rid of a bunch of options which people were freaking out about and one of the weird decisions they made was to not use text for some of the most common options like cut, copy, paste. Instead, you got these little hieroglyphic icons that nobody knew what they were. And so for the past three years, we've been complaining, you know what, why did you do such a thing? So they are reverting. Um, they're going to keep those icons in the same place. But when you right click on something now, you can see here, there are actually icons where they should, and text, right? Instead of just the icon. So that's, that's actually really nice. Um, you may also be familiar with the notion of, uh, WinZip, or I should say Zip integration in Windows. That's been around for a long, long time. Um, in the previous version of Windows 11, they added the ability to unarchive seven zip files, uh, RAR files, I believe, uh, TZ files, et cetera. Um, in 24H2, they're adding the ability to actually archive to those formats as well. So instead of just compress to zip, which was the old option, we get compress to and then these sub options. So we can go zip 7 zip which is 7z or tar and then there are additional options and you can actually go in and kind of configure uh whichever uh option you want here so that's it's kind of nice you can choose which one you want so if you want 7 zip you can choose the compression method and so forth most people won't need that kind of thing but for power users who have very specific needs kind of a nice little addition there uh there is a unified teams client now this is something uh, Microsoft should have done three years ago, but when they launched Windows 11, they replaced Skype with a new Teams consumer client. They have a separate work client or a worker school client, I should call it. Um, the worker school client is incredibly popular, 400 and something million users. Uh, it's going gangbusters. Consumer version, nobody used it. So they finally given in. They're going to do a unified client. Uh, and that will allow you to have both consumer and commercial accounts in the same app. Although, as you'll see, actually two different windows, unfortunately. Um, I've already configured that here. So by default, it hooks into the Microsoft account that you probably signed into by default. Um, but it does give you the ability um, to go in and um, add other accounts, which for some reason is not working here. <laughs> so, um, but you can access this down here too. So 
Um, usually what you can do is switch between these from this uh, option up here, but you can see these two windows side by side, very similar obviously, but the commercial version on the top has a lot more options, including this app store option, because this app is extensible. It's a full platform. Whereas this app, the consumer version is just kind of a simple chat based application, um, which again, nobody uses. So, uh, it will be up to you. You can use both types of accounts, multiple accounts. You can just use the one account. If you need it for work, it's going to be built into windows. You can just connect it to your work account and not have to worry about it. So good, good for them. Finally getting past that. Um, there's going to be some major improvements, uh, coming to widgets, although they're not all there yet. The only thing we have right now is this little icon area down here in the corner. They've redone all the icons to be higher resolution, more colorful. They've added icons. They've also added new animations. Um, I was kind of hoping as I did this, maybe that some kind of a non-violent news item would occur or something, and it could uh, alert me to that. It hasn't happened yet, uh, to my knowledge, but uh, that would appear down here, and those look nicer. Um, always a moment of uh, faith here as I open this app, this terrible app, but uh, nothing horrible, I guess, so that's good. <laughs> but uh, this is the widget interface as it exists today. This will be changing. Uh, you might know, because we talked about this earlier, that you can turn off this feed on the right. Uh, but Microsoft is also going to add a toggle here. So you can actually just, instead of just turning it off, you can toggle back and forth between this widgets area and the feed and actually multiple feeds as those feeds occur. And so this thing could, uh, you know, spread out across the screen here and there'll be a, a navigation bar over here. Um, so you can control that, but it's not available yet in the uh, build that I'm using here today. Unfortunately. And then quick settings down here, when you click on these three icons, right, like regular click, you get the quick settings. And in the previous versions of Windows 11, it would typically have six of these tiles up here, these quick setting tiles. You could configure it. There was an edit button down here and you could determine which of those tiles were there. You could uh, drag them around and move them in different orders and so forth. In 24H2, they've removed the editing bit and they now have all of the available tiles are there. You can see this weird little scroll control here. So I'm using the mouse right now to scroll, but you can scroll through all of the available tiles. So in this case, it looks like I've got 13 of them on this particular PC. It will vary by PC because different capabilities. But what's missing is the ability to reorder them and remove any you don't want. So uh, hopefully by the time 24H2 is uh, completed at the end of the year, this will become more functional. But you can see they're shifting to kind of a new design there. Um, I, I don't, good or bad, it's kind of hard to say, but it's it's different for sure. Um, and then the final big thing I wanted to talk about for 24H2 is Copilot. And there's a lot going on here, um, including many things that are not yet in this build. So we know that you can resize this thing now that that occurred earlier. So that goes out all, almost all the way there. Um, I'm trying to get back where it was. Um, and it also has this dual mode. Remember, you can uh, show it as an overlay or show it as a side by side. And that impacts apps that you run um, on the desktop, right? So in this mode, they're not impacted by this sidebar. And in this mode, they are, right? You can see how it resizes. So I actually prefer that. But if you close this, you know, you can see the problem here is that these, app, these apps that resized because of Copilot don't resize again. So that stuff was already there. Um, in 24H2, you're going to be able to run this like an app, uh, meaning you can pull it off of the side. It can be a floating window, maximize it however you want. It will, well, actually, it does today. Let me. Show it in here. Yeah, it's in there today. So you can actually multitask with it with Alt Tab, but that experience will make more sense when it's a window, obviously. Um, there's going to be more Windows commands. And those are the things where you kind of come in here and say something like, uh, you know, manage my startup apps, which I can't imagine is going to work, but let's see what it says. Um, in the initial version of Copilot in Windows 11, there wasn't really a lot of this stuff. Um, Okay, <laughs> it's, not, it's not really much here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, would you like me to open Task Manager? That's interesting. All right, so the the modern interface for doing what I just asked for is actually here in the Settings app, where you go to Startup. This is the this is the interface it should do. In fact, what it should open is this, but it's actually asking me if I want it to open Task Manager, which is the legacy way to do that. That's okay. So I click that, and this is the default view of Task Manager, not the startup. Or um, it's the, it's the what's it, uh, where's the little group called Startup Apps? Yeah. So it, you know it's Copilot. I'll get it there. 
<laughs> so it's just not quite there yet. Um, and you can see, you know, another one they'll be adding is uh, a bunch of um, uh, accessibility stuff. So like activate, uh, say narrator as a, one of the, is one of the accessibility tools built into windows and it's thinking and it's probably going to not do it, but yeah. So in this version, it's going to describe how I do it. Okay. So in 24 H2, when this thing is finalized, instead of describing how this works, it will in fact just do it for me. Right. So they're going to improve that kind of thing. Um, there'll be an option in settings. If you want to launch copilot, uh, when you sign into windows, so this pane will be visible. Um, that makes sense on really big screens or really wide screens. It wouldn't make sense on a laptop screen like when you're looking at here today. It's kind of a small screen, but it is, uh, you know, it's an option if you want that. You're also going to be able to take a text file or a PDF or some other document, Word document, whatever, and drag it onto the icon down here for Copilot, and it will understand what it is and then give you options to do something with that document, like summarize it or uh, rewrite it or whatever that's, whatever that might be. So that's good. Um, there is an interesting option in here. It's it's very well hidden. Um, there's this notion of plugins, which is not new. And in fact, there are no new plugins in there. Uh, but there's also this notion of chats. And this kind of duplicates in part what they're doing on the web with custom GPTs, which are the custom chatbots where you can choose between Copilot and Designer. And the truth is with Copilot and Windows, you could do either, right? Copilot is the version that will give you the text-based responses. And designer is the version that will give you the image based re, uh, responses. But you could, with Copilot selected, go in and say, create me a photo of whatever that photo is. And it would do the photo, it wouldn't describe it. But when you click on designer, what you can see here is that it's, it changes the colors, right? And that's uh, more important than maybe it sounds because when we go back, you can see it's blue and it was instead of pink or purple or whatever that color is. And what that's doing is, kind of setting the tone for how it responds, it's doing this more creative style, right? So it's kind of a, um, it's, it, in some ways, it's a, a more obvious uh, front end to this, or it would be if it wasn't so well hidden. Um, but what isn't in here are those custom GPTs that they added to the web version, which we talked about in a previous episode. So I expect that to happen in time for 24H2 for sure. So some stuff is here, some stuff is half here, some stuff is not here at all right and there's there is much more to come uh not just in this initial release that will be in the first half of the year but the bigger release that will come in the second half of the year but i think that's probably enough for a single episode um we'll obviously be talking a lot more about this version of windows actually before we leave there you go there's one of those little widget icons i was talking about so uh, kind of a, a prettier presentation than we used to have not a big deal but if you like widgets and like that kind of notification uh, those are actually getting better too well, Windows is on a very rapid release cycle, as you know, and maybe one of the questions here would be, do you want this now? Should you get it now? And given where we are, especially in time when you're able to view or listen to this episode, I would say wait, uh, because it's going to come to stable, right, to the general availability channel for everybody pretty quick. Um, the features that I am able to access today, you will be able to access very soon, if not immediately by the time you see this. So I don't think you should get into the insider program and enroll a PC right now, but you can kind of see what's coming down the pike and it won't be too long before you can access that kind of stuff. All right. I hope this was helpful. Uh, we will be back every week with a new episode. You can learn more at twit.tv slash H O W. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you, especially to all of our club Twitter members. I appreciate it so much. See you next week. Bye.